The Biden administration has taken every opportunity to strengthen the controlling and stifling grip they have on America. Indeed, the expanse of the regulatory state is only outmatched by the radicalism. From the energy sector to home loans, this administration has used red tape and executive authority to realize the goals of woke activists at the expense of everyday Americans. President Biden co-opted the vision of anti-energy radicals even before he entered office, when he vowed to end fossil fuel amidst thunderous applause. His administration made good on that promise to wage a war on energy. They canceled the Keystone XL pipeline. They halted court-ordered offshore lease sales, paused exports on liquefied natural gas. Everyday Americans and the energy-producing states continue to pay the price for this administration's outright hostility toward the very means by which we unlocked modern life. The president also made proponents of woke redistributive schemes happy when his administration advanced a set of mandates that punished creditworthy home buyers and forced them to subsidize riskier loans. A January 2023 Federal Housing Finance Agency directive increased fees for half of all borrowers with credit scores over 680, while decreasing fees for 90% of those under 680. Nearly 19 out of every 20 Americans have scores above the 680 threshold. That action sent a clear message which wasn't lost on middle-class Americans. If you work hard, if you pay your debts, the Biden administration wants you to subsidize the mortgages of those who did not make the same sacrifices that you did. This is the opposite of the American dream. Suffice it to say, Americans are keenly aware of the marching orders President Biden gave his administration. Embrace fringe ideas, fervently thrust them upon the populace, and leave them with the consequences. House Republicans will do everything we can to disrupt this cycle of punitive non sequiturs. That's why we're here today. The Biden administration has also exhibited a disturbing trend to surrendering to Green New Deal devotees to the detriment of everyday people. They put internal combustion engines and gas stoves, tools households across the country depend upon in their regulatory crosshairs. Now the Biden administration, now the Biden Department of Energy is acting outside the scope of its authority to pursue a woke energy conservation agenda that harms American consumers. For example, their recent efficiency standards for residential clothes washers will increase the already high cost of such appliances, while, according to their own analysis, saving Americans about $9 over the lifetime of the appliance. H.R. 6192, the Hands Off Our Home Appliance Act, will cut to the heart of the President Biden's overzealous regulatory agenda. The bill reforms the Department of Energy's procedures for issuing energy efficiency standards by prohibiting the Secretary of Energy from prescribing any new or amended energy conservation standard for a product that is not technologically feasible nor economically justified. <clears throat> but the Biden administration's effort to expand executive overreach isn't just limited to the home. In 2022, the Securities and Exchange Commission issued a guidance which would make it economically impracticable for a company to hold a customer's cryptocurrency. They took an opportunity to reduce confusion and turned it into a new policy, all the while limiting the ability of two consenting parties to engage in a financial transaction. That is the very definition of executive overreach. H.J. Res 109 provides for congressional disapproval of the SEC's attempt to disguise new policy as guidance. It also reasserts this chamber's authority in the rulemaking process. In the same spirit, we will revisit H.R. 2925, the Mining Regulatory Clarity Act. The destructive efforts of the executive branch have also been aided by allies in the judicial branch. In 2022, the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit's Rosemont decision upended 40 years of mining regulatory precedent and over a century of interpretation of mining law, the mining law of 1872. We cannot let radical environmentalists and ivory tower judges 
dictate whether America's natural resources will uplift American communities. H.R. 2925 will right the wrongs of the Rosemont decision. Additionally, the committee will consider H.R. 7109, the Equal Representation Act. For far too long, citizens have been included non-citizens have been included in the calculations that determine the apportionment of seats in the House of Representatives and the distribution of, of presidential electors. They are not able to vote, but as it stands now, their very presence can have an outsized effect and unfairly skew federal representation away from American citizens. What's more, President Biden's self-inflicted border crisis has added a disturbing angle to this issue because the localities sympathetic to the president's agenda, particularly those so-called sanctuary jurisdictions, are poised to directly benefit. This isn't hyperbole, and it is only getting worse. Since President Biden took office, there have been over, over 9 million illegal crossings. That number exceeds the population of 39 states. On this administration's watch, more illegal immigrants have crossed our border than the population's of 78% of the states in the Union. The People's House must act to ensure that the principle of one person, one vote remains. H.R. 7109 does that by directing the Census Bureau to include a question on the census for responders to indicate whether they're a citizen of the United States. It also amends existing statute to ensure that citizens and only citizens are included in the population of a state for the purposes of reapportionment in the House and determining the number of electors for president. I'm certain we'll have quite a robust debate on these issues, and as always, I look forward to it and look forward to the opportunity for the House to work its will. I'll now yield to the ranking member, Mr. McGovern, for any remarks he wishes to make. 